I'm Patrick Bailey with IQless.com. Today is December 19th, 2020, and in this video I'll be doing a little cropping of an STL file. Okay, now here's the exact problem I'm trying to solve. Now recently I was using a 0.6 millimeter nozzle, a bigger nozzle, to print some things out. So I thought, hey, I'd print out this uh, Caesar uh, print that I printed out in the past. So I started printing a few of those out again. And then I recalled one of the problems I had with this print in the past. And I'll show that real quickly here. Here we go. Uh, the person who did this print decided to kind of sign their name on the bottom. So you can see there's this little signature down here, which I don't mind in particular. So let me see if I can slice it real quick. So now here's this embedded signature, which is okay-ish, but it has a problem. So in one of the loop-to-loops in it, um, it's actually not connected directly. So as a result, just about every single time, it pops off. And so as it's trying to print things, it pops this thing off, and it just becomes a big issue. So I decided, hey, let me just, uh, there's enough space down there. Let me just crop off the bottom. Oh, there we go. Cool, we can show it here. Show the exact problem. Boom. Right here, these loop-de-loops. So here's these areas like this guy right here. Especially that one pops off, that one pops off. Yeah, I can put a little more glue, but still they just pop off and they get in the way. So, don't like it. So let me just cut the whole thing out. So, I found, there's many, many, many ways to do this, I'm sure. I'm sure if someone knows some more, post, post some notes or post some links to some videos. I came up with uh, one way to do it in OpenSCAD and a couple ways to do it in the Prusa Slicer itself. So, I love the OpenSCAD. I love that option first, if it works. In this case, in my case, it actually didn't work, but I'll go over that. So for those who aren't familiar, OpenSCAD is a nice uh, 3D rendering tool where you can do 3D renderings as code. I've done several videos on that, other people have as well, but if you don't have it, you can go to OpenSCAD and download it. So let me show you real quickly a good and a bad one. So uh, in OpenSCAD, you can code. Let me comment some of these guys out real quickly so we don't see them. Don't matter. Okay, if I do this and I run this quick one, you can see here's this uh, Clockwork Hound uh, that I've done recently. Well, that I bought off. Uh, eh, what's that site? Anyway, this one is a purchase. But anyway, you can see it's a complicated shape. So I just wanted to show how I could crop it. So one way you can crop things in OpenSCAD, you can you can bring an STL file in. So this STL file is in the same folder that this actual OpenSCAD file has been saved to, and I do an import, it renders it. I also did a translate, which moves it around the board a little bit because I want to get in a certain spot. Then down here, I can do a cube. So I'll do a cube here, and I've already kind of drawn it here. But also here you can make a color. So I'm saying, hey, anything in these brackets make a certain color. I'm going to make it in this case. If you're familiar with hex colors, this is a red. Just so it stands out, it's easier to see. Oh, I did. What are you complaining about now? Oh, the difference. Ah. Okay, I'm not going to yet subtract them from each other. So I'm going to make this shape, and you can see this shape is kind of bisecting this dog, but it's not yet cutting it. So in here, you can do what's called a difference. So here's this difference. The difference takes whatever the first shape it finds is, and then it takes all the subsequent shapes and subtracts them from the first shape. So if I click here and do this quick preview render, Boom. I get exactly what I want just in this test example. I get this dog, you know, cut in half, which is kind of cool. However, here's the problem. Uh, that might work, and it might not depend on the complexity of the shape. In this, in this case, the shape's a little too complex for OpenSCAD to figure it out. So when I go hit render, and I'll let this kind of go. It might take a while. When I go render, I have to render before I can make an STL file. In this case, if I render it, it fails. So, won't won't. Same thing happens for the Caesar uh, statue. When it's too complicated, I, try, I can cut it in the preview, but when I try to render it, I get bupkis. So this does not solve my problem. But I do want to show that it can solve the problem uh, in some cases. So here, I've got another simpler shape. Uh, and I'll come down here and show the shape here. <coughs> Which is actually a flower pot I've designed. So here's just a simple flower pot, not a lot to it. <coughs> hmm. Hmm, sorry, a little cough in here. Um, and here I can put a cube in real quick. I'm going to cut this guy in half. 
And then again, do the difference. Boom. And I get this guy. Now I get this kind of cool cross section. Now in this case, it's not too complex. I go to render it. And I guess it already rendered. So rendered and it works. And here I can hit STL, save an STL file. And that works. So in some cases, OpenSCAD can get the job done. In other cases, not so much. So here is my rendered version on the Clockwork Hound. It can't figure it out. You get nothing. So first method, me. Eh. Might work for you, it might work for me in some cases, but it does not work with Caesar. So now when it comes to Caesar, there are actually a couple other methods you can do, uh, depending on how you want to cut things. So let me bring this up. So uh, first we'll do, we'll do the dog one just to show that. So now I'll bring in a uh, clockwork hound, where is he? There we go, I bring the clockwork hound into pr the Prusa slicer. And then I can right click on him and I can add a modifier. <clears throat> so modifiers, I can put a box or a cylinder in there and it's not going to be rendered, but what's going to happen is I can, uh, wherever it hits the main object that's underneath in this work place, the clockwork hound, you can adjust it. So you can say, Hey, in this particular place, rather than normally doing two printers, do four. Rather than normally do 20% infill, do 50% infill. So you can do some interesting things with this. So here, I'll go down here, remove the scale, and I'll go, that's probably okay. I'll go 150, I'll go 40, 100, adjust it. There we go. You can make it a little taller. 80, 80. There we are. So now we can come here. May not be perfect, but I'll kind of cut this dog in half. And if that's all I do, I've done nothing. Because it says, hey, here's a section to modify. And I didn't tell it how to modify that section. But I can go over here and say, right click. Okay, right click on the generic box and say, add settings. And I'll say, infill. And I'll just kind of choose everything. This can get really complicated. And I'll come over here and say, add settings, uh, layers and perimeters. And just, again, kind of choose everything. Because we're going to psych it out and basically tell it not to do anything. So here we have here we go down the list. We say, okay, uh, there's your fill density. We'll set it to zero. So in that area, it's going to be zero. Uh, this layer, we'll just, in other words, we kind of just zero things out. So I zeroed that out, zero percent. Uh, go down and make that zero. Go down and make that zero. This might be overkill. That might not be necessary, but I'm just thinking, do it all. Okay. And then we hit slice. And it should cut that in half. So there we go. Boom. We got this thing cut in half. And we got exactly what we want for this guy. So that works just fine if you want to do some kind of weird cut like that. Now, the problem is, though, uh, in my case, in theory, and I tried it out, you can cut the bottom out. But now you have this empty void. And it yells at you and says, I can't print that. There's nothing to print for the first, you know, 10 layers. And so I'm confused and can't do that. So it can work when I'm cutting things like this, but not when I'm just merely cutting the bottom. But there is an option. <laughs> so over here, we can go over here and click on this little split button here. So here's this cut. So you can click on this cut, and you can see all of a sudden this little layer pops in here. And so we can go down here, and the Z is at 100, but here we can adjust it down to 10 or so. So I'll just keep it at 10. That's probably okay for just this demo. And I can perform the cut. So you tell it to cut it, and in this case, what do I do? Oh, I kept I kept them both. Ah, I gotta go figure that one out. Let me undo that. There we go. Sorry. Keep upper part. There we go. Uncheck keep lower part because I don't want to keep it. And uh, there we go. Cut it. Boom. There we go. So now all that text is gone. I could render it. And that's what I did. So I kind of, I didn't. Okay. So that's what I did. And then I rendered it. Boom. Done. So that's how I solved my problem. And it worked pretty well. So now I don't have that problem anymore. So there's the couple of ways to kind of crop things. And if you have any other methods, and I know there are probably tons out there, uh, share them in the comments. But I do like the OpenSCAD one. I think the OpenSCAD one is the most ideal, nice way to cut things. 
but in some cases it doesn't work. But it's nice to know that the Prusa slicer has a few ways that we can cut things. So anyway, hope that helps someone out there. You may have noticed my 3D printed chains are finally hanging up on my wall. I designed a nice hook system, which I will cover in my next video. Until then, happy 3D printing and may the first layer be ever in your favor.